congratulations, both of you in the movie. It is just, a, it's a roller coaster ride. It's such great fun. And I think what's wonderful is that not just for the, the DC audience, but for a wider audience as well, because this is such fun. Was it as fun to make or is it fun now when you watch it? We had a horrible time making it. <laughs> there were very few giggles, um, no nights out. No one remained friends afterwards. It was awful. Uh, I'm glad the movie turned out well, but yeah. <laughs> No fun whatsoever. I can't agree with any of the above. It was, uh, <laughs> it was definitely, um, you know, a rare experience. You know, when you make a uh, film and, you know, it's, it's a traveling circus to another traveling circus. And then every now and again, you bond with one that, you know, you take with you for the rest of your life in some versions. And so this is definitely one of those. There's one action scene, Margo, which I'm sure everyone's talked about, where it is just, it's probably one of the most ridiculous ones ever in cinematic history. It is ridiculous. I remember reading it on the page. And I mean, of course, I couldn't imagine what ultimately James was imagining and, and what we realized on the day. But even on the page, I was like, this is insane. He had written in, you know, instead of blood and guts, it's flowers and birds and <laughs> all these amazing graphics but also just, it was ambitious. I think we shot it in about four days and I was like, wow, James, are we gonna, are we gonna be able to kill this many people in four days of shooting? He's like, yeah, we got this. It was really fun to do. I love Idris as well. You, you've just got that wonderful line about blood sport, which is, uh, I'm the man who puts Superman in intensive care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that was, um, if I'm honest, that was something that developed because when I signed on, I didn't know that I was playing Bloodsport and neither did James. We didn't know. We just knew that this character was a central sort of uh, anti-leader that had a, a personal connection to life that he needed to uncover. But then the Bloodsport of it came later. And then when I discovered that, you know, this was something that he was a big part of Bloodsport's history is that he put Superman in intensive care. I was like, we have to have that in. And so it was James, you know, it was like, we have to uh, nurture that. Both of you getting some kind of a start as well in soaps, neighbours, obviously, and family affairs for you, Idris. Do, do soaps teach you any kind of discipline or is there something that you take from that that you now, you know, put into the world of, of, of being a movie star? How to learn your lines in five minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, after, I always said after walking off a soap, everything would be easy after that. It was brilliant training ground. But it's true, learning, I mean, just learning lines. I'd sit down with 60 pages in my lap in a morning and just fly through it, read it once, got it. I don't think I could do that now. But I think the biggest thing working on a soap and working with a multi-camera sort of scenario was just being so aware of every other department and working within the bigger machine. Whereas I feel like sometimes in feature films... <laughs> You can kind of be like, oh, everyone should work around my process. But mm -mm. if you worked on a soap first, I think you're very cognizant of, yeah, adapting what you need to do to work within everyone else's parameters as well. Margo, I've got to ask you about Love Island. Is, again, is this true? I, I, do we, I mean, I know you had a Love Island birthday party. Are you watching the current series? <laughs> yes, to all of the above. I adore Love Island so much. Do you know who else really loves Love Island? Our director, writer-director, James Gunn, oh. is also a huge Love Island fan, and we would talk about it all the time. We probably spoke about Love Island more than we spoke about this film when we were on set. We had our drink bottles on set. The current season, I'm, I haven't really gotten into it yet. I'm struggling to get into it this season, but, you know, it's still early days. And with the lag time of when you get the episodes in America, you know, so I'm a little behind, but I adore it. I adore the show. You are not in the UK. There's no way you're in the Look UK. where I am. Idris. I can't see Hollywood sign. I'm underneath the Hollywood oh, sign. Hollywood sign. Sorry, I haven't got full play. Margo, I've got to ask you something. Is this true that you want to go to Scotland, drink whiskey, and play the pipes? <laughs> <laughs> A specific version. I mean, I'd love to go to Scotland, but I don't think I have ever publicly said that I want to go play pipes <laughs> and drink whiskey. But I mean, now that you mention it, not no. I'd also really like to do the Harry Potter tour. That would be cool. Oh, yeah, very cool. Every time I, I, I catch up with Idris, he's got a new skill. So I'm presuming, Idris, you can probably play the pipes anyway, can't you? You know what? I can't. I was in Australia, actually. I was in Sydney, and uh, our producer, who also has a Scottish um, background, he took us out on a boat around the Sydney Harbour for dinner and then cracked out the bagpipes and won out it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was incredible, beautiful, and I was like, wow, I've got a new appreciation for it. 
Where was he uh, hiding the bagpipes? <laughs> she had that, like, just ready to go as a party trick. Things get dull. He's like, I know it's going to liven this up. <laughs> Give me a minute. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.